you looking at? Eye candy, sex objects, video vixen. They're the women who shake their stuff in today's rap videos. They're a big part of the hip hop formula. Ooh, ooh. But behind the bump and grind, video vixens work in a harsh world with little respect and plenty of harassment. In this hour, VH1 News investigates the sexual politics of the video world, such as non-stop ogling at casting sessions. Before you even hit the set, you're being told, wear something tight and sexy, show your legs, and it's degrading from day one. Constant come-ons on the set. I had to direct the corner me and just whooped it out. Where men wield most of the power. Hit it. It's not like a corporate job where if your boss wants to sleep with you, he knows not to ask you. Here, they, they might ask. And some women will do anything for a taste of celebrity. There is always a girl who's there to f*** an artist. I hook up with directors, artists, producers. <laughs> And we'll meet the vixen who blew the whistle on the whole scene. I was definitely pouring myself for a good two years of my life. All next on VH1 News Presents Hip Hop Videos Sexploitation on the Set. Break beats, b-boys, and graffiti, the essence of hip-hop, are rarely seen in music videos today. Now, it's all about the bling. The formula is platinum chains, champagne, and fancy cars. And then, of course, there are tons of women. Today's videos portray women as nothing more than sexual accessories. They've gotten to a point where they're, it's just basically just ass and titties on the camera. I don't think I've seen a video in a long time where women aren't shaking their butts. You know, it's like, it's a must. Skills. 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 What you see now is so different from the video vixens of yore. I mean, if you look at Biz Marquee, Just a Friend. The girl in that video seems like a girl that you would find in any grocery store anywhere in the world. There was a time when girls were really dancing, like they had to be dancers, you know, and the dancing was hot, like it took skills. Nowadays, video girls is more of your voluptuous, sex pot type girl. You definitely want to have assets, if you know what I mean. I mean, these girls have what it takes, and what it takes is cakes. But the on-screen images in hip-hop videos are nothing compared to what goes on behind the scenes. It's a world where sex is a commodity that's traded openly by women who perform sexual favors in hopes of becoming video stars, and by rappers, directors, and posses who encourage it at every turn. Such activity had been an ugly secret of hip-hop until Corinne Stephens spoke out. This whole industry is misogynistic. Corinne was an impressionable and determined 21-year-old when she made her video debut alongside Jay-Z. I knew that I was different and that I was willing to push the envelope more. And at the time, it was the attention that I was looking for, and that's what I got. As her resume grew, so did her reputation. As a sex toy, she says, for some of rap's most powerful men. From your Jay-Z's, to your Ja Rules, to your Diddy's, to your Mysticals. Danger! Anyone who was hot at that time, because we traveled in the same circles, we went to the same parties. I was definitely being passed around. But I let myself. It's, 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 it's what I wanted. I wanted everyone to like me. Corinne's behavior was perpetuated by an industry where men had the power. And a woman's body gets her on the set. You have a lot of sexy women walking around and next to nothing. It is a very sexually charged environment. It is a very testosterone-laden business. Where do you see my oh. So yeah, that environment and that mix is gonna lead to a lot of inappropriate behavior. Oh! Corinne tells all in her 2005 book, Confessions of a Video Vixen, and calls out the hip hop industry for treating women as disposable sex objects. Every time I threw on that baby oil and that bathing suit and got my hair all done up and just to stand next to some guy, I was a prop and 
how awful do I feel, you know, six years later, five years later, looking back at myself. Corinne's explosive book and her decision to name names has made her public enemy number one in the hip hop community. Peace, Sue Head. I'm glad you're doing good with your book, girl, but you living dangerous. Chill out. <laughs> That's just wow. <laughs> Whew, I feel bad for all those dudes in that book. Her whole point is she's selling a product. So she's doing whatever she can do to make money and to get notoriety. If you're in this book and you don't like what you read, then you shouldn't have done it, and hopefully you won't do it again. Let me explain this to you. My thoughts on Corinne Stephens is that she talks too much. She's basically talking about everything that goes on behind closed doors. That's why they're behind closed doors. It's not just the men who are using sex as a bargaining tool. Some women are giving it up to get ahead. They're known as video hoes and they arrive on set with only one objective. There is always a girl who's there to f an artist. I like the way you do that right there, right there. The hip hop video groupie. Yeah, we got those. They just want to get on there. C50, C game. I just want to get next to game. I'm going to give him some. Ooh, if he says anything to me, girl, it's on. I'm dropping it like it's hot right there. Video groupies can be relentless in their pursuit of stars. They will sneak on set, they will put on a production shirt and a hat and start moving lights. Yeah. Yeah. She will infiltrate. She's tougher than your Navy SEAL. She can get up in there. I mean, we got to shake females all the time and jump out the limo, run to the elevator and switch flows. And it's crazy, man. Where this thing happened to me, a girl, you know, years ago, I, I had sex with a girl. I was about to throw the condom away, and she said, no, 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 let me out the condom. I was disgusted, personally. On the video set, it's common to see groupies in action. I've been on the set where I've seen the trailer jumping up and down. I'm just like, wow, so you this person. I was on this one video, and I went to the bathroom, and this, this girl was giving this guy a <laughs> and then I told somebody, and they was like, yeah, that's what she's doing in the bathroom. She's giving The existence of groupies makes it tougher for the many women who don't sleep with artists and who say they're unfairly labeled and sometimes mistreated. It just gives most of us a bad name, all of us a bad name, really. Some of us get really offended when a guy comes up to us and, you know, says, hey, uh, come me. And the woman before him said, sure. We're not hoes. We're, we're not just any old average girl just in the hood just trying to find whatever rapper to take care of us. We have much more to us. We're educated. We're intelligent. There's a spectrum. The video model and the video hoe. I don't know their world. I don't understand it. I've never, ever, ever felt like I needed to, you know, offer myself sexually. Video girls navigate this macho minefield for one reason. They want to be stars. I think a lot of girls want to be seen in the video. A lot of girls want that attention. A lot of girls want to see themselves on TV. These women wouldn't be the first to parlay video work into stardom. Eva Mendez appeared in Will Smith's Miami, and Layla Arcieri got her start alongside Q-Tip. For most girls that get involved with videos, that's almost like their foot in the door to be able to open up other doors to this whole industry. You know what I like, models and actresses. But Eva Mendez is the exception. The video avenue to stardom is a dead end for most. Yet aspiring video girls still think shaking their rump with a rap star is their ticket. This is an image that has been shown repetitiously to a group of women for at least five or six years. They see this as their only entry into a glamorous world. Of course they're going to come. Coming up, inside the meat market at a hip-hop casting session. If we even hit the set. You're being told, wear something tight and sexy, show your legs, show your tits, and it's degrading from day one. I'm really, really hot. Plus, women find out they might have to give it up to get somewhere. Now, I've had someone just blatantly say, I want, I want to sleep with you, and based on your answer, that's how far you're going to get. Next on Hip Hop Videos, Sexploitation on the Set. Rap videos may display half-naked women as sex objects, but aspiring video girls still line up to drop it like it's hot. 
It all begins at the casting session where the women show off their assets. How you doing today? Yes. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Motion video girls, since sex sales, they think they have to come in very scantily clad, you know, um, short skirts, you know, showing their bodies. And basically, they're right. And if we even hit the set, you're being told, wear something tight and sexy, show your legs, show your tits, and it's degrading from day one. If a woman feels like she's going to be degrading herself, then why are you at the casting? Like, it's a choice. No matter what the role incurs, it's always somebody is like, I'm ready. Where do I sign up? Ulysses Terrero, a New York casting director, is holding an open audition for an upcoming video. The reason why you guys are here today, we're doing a casting for a new single with Mr. 50 Cent featuring Mob Deep and M.O.P. Women have come from all over to audition. It took two trains and walked 13 blocks to get here. <laughs> About to pass out. But I'm going to get this. Even though I can't dance, I'm going to get it done. Some are looking to score their first video gig. This is my first time. First time ever. Ever doing whatever I'm doing right now. Yeah, this is our first audition. When you go to a casting, you walk in, they give you a number. 24! 24! Can we try to stay in number order, please? They take a snapshot. <laughs> Sometimes you're required to dance. That's like the funniest part, because you're like, oh, God, like, <laughs> what am I going to do? Hit it! Come on, rock. Checking in the closet for my blue below suit. Piping all around it with the matching tin boots. Hop up in the wagon with the 20 inch shoes on. Oh. For plenty of girls, this can be an awkward moment. I mean, you're not at a party, so you just feel a little uncomfortable just dancing for no reason right there. When I go in and like, okay, we need you to dance, I'm like, okay, I don't dance and I won't get the role because they may be looking for something more than what I'm willing to offer. I do feel weird dancing in front of them, but I wanted to get the part. So if that's what I have to do, I'll do it. Some girls think that in order to get the role, they have to flash more than a smile. I've seen everything from, uh, excuse me, do you mind if I could take my shirt off right now? And always the, 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 the purse falls down in front of me and I have to bend over seductively to pick up the purse. If they're dancing, got a little top on, they know that their top is maybe falling a little bit, they'll let it fall. Thinking that if they do a little bit more, that might get them a little bit further. <laughs> Once the audition's over, the girls can only cross their fingers and wait. I want this one. It's 50. You know, you always know that 50 is going to be a number one song, so that video is going to be everywhere. You know what, 50, we must be in that video. Seriously, I'm for real. You have me there all day. I better be in that video. <laughs> In less than a day, Ulysses and his brother, director Jesse, whittle the 150 candidates down to a lucky 32, and it's off to the set. In addition to the 32 principal girls, there are also over 200 extras. On a video set, the principals get the star treatment. Extras don't. Principal girls are going to be starting out at 350 to 1500 for the day. It could be a two-day shoot. They get net each day. To be an extra, you get paid $75 to $150. If they take taxes out of that, you get 50 bucks. Roll playback, please. This pecking order fuels competition on set. Some girls go the extra mile, trying to get noticed. She might turn around and do something crazy, wear a little less clothes, or whatever she thinks that she can do to get more camera time. Do you understand what I need? I'd be the girl in the pasties on top of the table doing a dance while everyone else was just trying to be as demure as possible. It got me more spotlight, it got me more money. But at one recent video shoot, one model's attempt to get more attention backfired. I need some tape, because you know I need double-sided tape. Double-sided, it's going to so pop out. That's why I like tape? that other shirt, because this is why I don't have to go through that. That other shirt was more sexy than that. But this here, your tits falling out left and right. On most video sets, there's no shortage of clothing choices. Typically, these options show as much skin as possible. 
At a recent MAC-10 video shoot, one woman protested. I told them before I got here, if I do the video, it's, I'm not wearing no hoochie mama little shorts with my butt hanging out. You know, got here and they're like, no, we want you in these little tiny shorts. I'm like, no. Nah. Yo, enough of that. Back to the beat. You have the right to say, uh, I'm not comfortable in that and I'm not wearing that. A video girl who complains can find herself at odds with the casting director. Music video is all about sexiness, sex sells. And um, she knew what the uh, job entailed. She just wasn't feeling the clothes. She wasn't feeling this. She never appeared in the video. Yeah. On video shoots, the days are long and the hours crawl by. To fill the downtime, sets can turn into an all-out party. You're there all day for probably about 30 minutes of work, so you get restless, you get bored. In the meantime, you know, people have gone to liquor stores, you know, people, you know, start drinking, and all of a sudden, it's a big party. I tell people who work on, on one of my sets, I'm like, yo, if you're going to work for me, everybody got to be able to have a party. You know what I'm saying? And, and we do that. Oh, all we want to do is party. Go. You know, the girls get a little looser, the guys get a little looser. I got to have people in that frame of mind. When the party's in full effect, the girls find themselves in the crosshairs of male admirers. Girls get hit on a set every day. I mean, it comes with the territory. It's not like a corporate job where if your boss wants to sleep with you, he knows not to ask you. Here, they, they might ask. One particular uh, video that I was on, I'm sitting down speaking to the artist, and we're just having a conversation about life. He just kind of stopped me. He was like, so when are we going to And I was like, um... Never. My goodies, my goodies, if a woman turns down advances, goodies, her job could be on the line. I've had someone just split and you say, I want, I want to sleep with you. And based on your answer, that's how far you're going to get. Just respect the play of I had a director corner me and just whooped it out. I was, felt really, really disrespected. I got up and I cursed his ass out in Spanish. Like, yeah. But guess what? I never got hired from him again. You got some guy that's just some Joe Schmo that's starting to direct. That's all he has is the fact that he thinks he's a director, and he might use that to sleep with a girl. Sometimes the worst offenders are not the directors or artists, but their boys. Entourage, they're like your worst nightmare. <laughs> they feel like, you know, you should talk to them because they're with so-and-so. The entourage is the cat calling, the hissing, hey, girl, hey, you know, that kind of... Entourages are pretty disgusting. They're like, you know, hey, baby, come me, or, you know, where are you going tonight, or damn, or I've even had my ass grabbed. Rapper Cameron was once part of Mesa's entourage, and he used his status as sexual leverage. In my earlier days, well, I was like his tester. <laughs> oh, hey, you want to get the mace? Let me see, I'll let you know if he likes you. Come in here with me. <laughs> And you'll have the girls that can't get next to the artists, and so they'll settle for the entourage. If I get a lot of girls now, I'll, I'll give them to my friends. I'll be like, hey, go in here with him, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll never come back. Coming up, a former video girl lays it all out. Every time I had sex, it was for money. Maybe not, you know, 20 bucks on the nightstand kind of money, but it was being mailed to me, it was being deposited. Plus the anything goes world of uncut videos. You know, give the people what they want. We all know sex sells and let's sell it. I think that the videos that play on uncut is horrible. Next on Hip Hop Videos, Sexploitation on the Set. hip-hop video girls. The rappers and directors aren't the only ones looking for on-set action. Often the girls, dazzled by celebrity, try to sleep their way to success. This stardom and this fame and this glitz and glamour is a hard thing to deny. You want to be there in all the action. You want to be there having all the fun with everybody. And when an artist turns on the charm, it's hard to say no. They just get overwhelmed and you know, and if the artist is leading in that direction, then chances are it might happen because it's a one-in-a-lifetime once chance. Oh. 
Siobhan Hodges met the rapper Snoop Dogg on the set of Groupie Love. I um, kind of had a little crush because he's, you know, very charismatic and his personality just totally like wins you over. I would say that Snoop Dogg is the Casanova of all the artists. While separated from his wife, Snoop invited Siobhan on one of his bus tours. I was pretty young at the time. I just just turned 19. Um, so I was pretty much the baby on tour, you know. <laughs> Siobhan, you can see the transformation from shy and quiet to uh, buck wild. It was definitely, that was one of the best times of my life. When they returned, Siobhan says their relationship became intimate. I never really thought we were going to be together, but it was cool for the moment. I definitely, I don't regret anything. But the alleged fling gave Siobhan a reputation for sleeping around, and one of Snoop's crew thought she was fair game. He wanted me so bad that he was like, yo, if you don't hook up with me, I'm not going to give you any more work. He even, like, cussed me out at a casting, like, took me outside and was like, yo, you're not getting any work. What are you doing here like a groupie? Siobhan wouldn't give in, and she hasn't worked with Snoop since. It was one avenue that was shut, but to me, it kind of maybe needed to be cut a long time ago. A member of Snoop's camp denies the allegations and says Siobhan's promiscuity caused them to stop hiring her. For shizzle. Siobhan's story is a common one. Lots of video girls want to be the star's number one honey. They get caught up in the hype, wanting to be the homegirl of Jay-Z, the homegirl of Ja Rule, the homegirl of Nelly. It goes back to peer pressure, and it goes back to wanting to belong. People want to belong to something. That's all Corinne Steffens was looking for when she became a video girl in 2000. I looked at those girls and just wanted to be like that. Not necessarily thinking of it as a job, but just wanting to be pretty and look like a woman. Corinne came from a broken home and survived an abusive relationship with a rapper. Being a video girl gave her a jolt of self-esteem. Just coming from abuse after abuse, growing up not feeling loved, not feeling pretty, not feeling worthy. All of a sudden, I'm around people that made me feel all of those things. She had some early success, appearing in Jay-Z's Hey Poppy and LL Cool J's Fatty Girl. Corinne became a fixture at the rap label Murder, Inc. Murder, Inc. for me was a family of people. It was the closest thing to a family that I had ever had in my life. But if Corinne wanted to stay in the family, she had to have sex. I never said no to anyone, um, no matter what it was. I was like, okay, I'm obliged to do it, you know, because there was no self-confidence and there was no self-worth and there was no self-love. Corinne describes being passed around by some of rap's biggest players in her book, Confessions of a Video Vixen. It's kind of like you show up somewhere and all of a sudden someone's really nice to you. And you think they're being genu genuinely nice to you. You don't realize they're being nice to you because so-and-so just told them how great you were in bed last week. For Corinne, the sex was fueled by a stream of drugs and alcohol. You couldn't do anything unless you got drunk or high first. And every day we woke up with cognac. First thing in the morning you have is cognac. And then you go out and you're popping pills and that's, that was the biggest part of my life at the time. Corinne's sexual abilities were so well known, she even received the special nickname, Superhead. When it began, it was just a joke, you know, that came from a song. I thought it was cute, and the guys on Murder, Inc. would call me Sue. And then when it grew into something ugly, it hurt me. And I kind of, I was ashamed. In the rap world, some women are kept around solely as a crew's sexual plaything. That's what you call the jump off, you know? You bounce her around, let her go get off with everybody. If she on it like that, you keep her around. You keep her around, because you never know when somebody may get hot. But Corinne and others like her get more than attention. They get cash. Every time I had sex, it was for money. Maybe not, you know, 
20 bucks on the nightstand kind of money but it was being mailed to me it was being deposited rent was being paid and cars were being leased she liked to have money in her pocket in retrospect i think that everything i did was a form of prostitution um just selling myself for a lot less than i was worth for some finding a sugar daddy is the ultimate goal the girls there that think that if i meet so and so I'm trying to hook up with so-and-so. Maybe he can pay my bill for the next couple months. They're trying to hit the jackpot. Let's be realistic. This is a business. And it's the business of getting ahead. The weirdest thing I ever heard in my life, ever, a video shoot. A girl tried to get the turkey basin to suck the thing out the condom <laughs> to keep the bait. It's crazy. I've been with women, and they were with me clearly for the money you know, got pregnant with kids. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's a big game out there. There were girls that want to be taken care of by a celebrity, not realizing that um, you're, you're a whore. You know, plain and simple, that's what you are. Uh. Asia is a regular in the hip-hop world without appearing in many videos. I hook up with directors, artists, producers. I got offered to do a lot of videos, but it's not enough money to be paid for. I can't be at the set for three, four days and then only getting paid a little bit amount of money. For Asia, sex is nothing more than a business. These men is crazy because they're trying to sweet talk you. And I was like, I already know what you want, but it's a give and take. You know what I'm saying? You got to give some up. It ain't nothing for free nowadays. You got to pay for nookie. If you are a young lady who's starving, but yet you with these artists who's making millions of dollars, he might throw you a bone. Hey, here, baby, here's a couple of dollars. Go buy yourself something nice. And all of a sudden, she realizes, well, let me hang out with a whole lot more. Look it, pay my bills. I don't care when people call me names as in, like, she's a bitch, she's a slut, she's a hoe. As long as I'm making money, I don't give a f what goes on. I'm never going to go poor, never going to go broke, and that's how I look at it. Coming up, getting down and dirty at a shoot in North Carolina. We weren't representing hoes. We weren't even representing sex. Maybe the sexual aspect of it. Plus, critics slam rap's obsession with bling and babes. I think for every video that's out now, the visuals fit the song. It just so happens that 98% of our music is lewd and disgusting. Next on Hip Hop Videos, Sexploitation on the Set. Go to Come on. Far away from the rented yachts and shiny Bentleys, there's a much more down and dirty type of hip hop video. The uncensored TNA Fest, known as Uncut. Uncut videos are videos that are played on late night on BT and other different avenues. The uncut video is, is a video that's a little sexier for TV. And it's really more for an adult audience. The fact that there's a market for uncut crap is amazing to me. If you just tune in, you can see a stripper on the pole. I would never do an uncut video. Never. Uncut right now? It's really bad, I think. It's all the same thing. Digital camera, a butt shaking, a dude saying some shake, shake that ass rhyme. It's just like, wow. Uncut videos have been broadcast on cable since 2000 and sold on DVD for 1995. Everyone's doing them, from stars like N.E.R.D. and Ludacris to artists on the rise. I love the videos on Uncut. Both of my videos were on Uncut. That's the exposure artists need to become a successful artist. Oh. Atlanta rapper Big Delph recently scored with his Uncut video, V.I.P. Girl, you know I like that. Every time that I see you want to wipe that. He has returned to Fayetteville, North Carolina with fellow MCs Forte and John Doe to shoot a second video for his new single, Back Out. You know, give the people what they want. We all know sex sells, and let's sell it. Delph doesn't need a casting director. He finds his ladies through a local gentleman's club, Crazy Dave's Cabaret, and the club's manager, Magic. 
I have an eye for beauty. Beauty is my business. I take pride in hiring a good group of girls. Magic is the one that takes care of everything. I tell him what I want. He goes out and gets them. One of the girls picked for the video is Jada, a 20-year-old dancer from Detroit. Jada is a phenomenal woman. Before she became a magic girl, her lifestyle was different. My childhood was pretty rough. You know, I've seen a lot of stuff, learned a lot of things that no one should have known or should ever have to learn. I've had to sell drugs. I had to really get my hands dirty. But it's survival. It's not always worth it, but I had a good workout. Jade is joined in the video by Princess, a fellow dancer and a single mom. It's hard being a parent because I'm young. And it's hard when you don't have a college degree. And you know, I'm not married, I'm single. I have to mostly rely on my mother and myself. Every day is a new challenge. I let her know once we found out the baby was coming, it wasn't the end of her life. It was just an extension. And she was going to have to find different avenues to get where she wanted to be. 21-year-old Vanity, a new dancer in Fayetteville, is also lured by the promise of uncut video fame. Vanity is from a small town in, in the Carolinas, Maxton. She made her way to Fayetteville in search of a better life. I've been through a lot of stuff in my life. I have had three brothers, but two of them died. It's really been tough for me because my father raised me till I was 16 and I left home with some. I've been on my own since I was 16. This is Vanity's first appearance in a music video. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I would love to be in a video instead of having a strip or whatever. I would take that offer because being in a video, that's like, wow. For these women, uncut videos are as close to Hollywood as Fayetteville gets. I think any girl would do it if they came across the opportunity, but... It differs because in Hollywood, you know, you got celebrities everywhere all the time and girls can get more exposure and be noticed, but not a lot of traffic comes with that. Where I come from, you don't get to do too much. You don't get to experience too much, so down there it's not nothing like hip-hop. I mean, you know, I see it on TV, but that's as far as I see it. The question is, how far will they go? to be part of that world. I would like to get up there and be on the video, but I don't want to disgrace myself. I mean, I'm a stripper, but showing my whole body on television. I don't know about all that. We can have fun, but I'm not trying to be crazy. <laughs> Before the shoot, Magic offers a few words of inspiration. You ladies are trendsetters right now. We depend a lot on you all to represent North Carolina in its entirety. Give me an hour and a half of good hard work, dedication, concentration. If you guys actually do something, do it. You're a beautiful group of girls. Let's stay that way. Let's stay professional. And I appreciate all y'all for showing up. What we're going to do is take a professional hotel, a classy hotel, and make it trashy for about 30 minutes. Give me three minutes to just hide it. Man, energy. Let's go. Talking that this shit, how you run the street. You gotta dance in the pool. Come on, dance in the water. When they say there's hoes in this house or anything like that, it's just a song. I mean, it's just a word to me. We weren't representing hoes. We weren't even representing sex. Maybe the sexual aspect of it, as the bikinis or the short skirts or something like that, but that's about all. Yeah, blow bubbles on it. Blow bubbles on them. It's a job. It's not who they are. And when I see my daughter in the video, that's what she does. I know when she comes home, she's got curlers in her hair like everybody else is somebody's mama. She's picking up toys. She's doing laundry. It's a job. The majority of the people in the industry are just an image. The things that they portray and talk about and rap about are not things that they actually believe in or things that they actually do. The whole crew heads back to Crazy Dave's for the final scene. Three, two, right on the set, one. In the world of uncut, it's business as usual, but to establish video models, it's misogyny on parade. 
I think that the videos that play on Uncut is horrible. Why? Those girls degrade themselves. I mean, it's disgusting. I mean, most of it is just gratuitous and point it's pointless. A lot of these girls are 19, 20, and 21, and they don't know any better. They want to be here, and they come out looking good just to be seen. What you have to remember is everybody's grown here. These ladies, they going to do what they want to do. After 12 long hours, the ladies are finished for the night. I'm glad it's over. The girls and especially Vanity, are proud of their work. I never did anything like that in my life. They treated me special. They treated me, you know, like I was somebody. I think we put a very important part in the video because we kind of livened it up a little bit and hyped it up and made it look more fun. Like some other uncut videos, this gig wasn't such a sweet deal for the girls. They weren't paid for their work. No, we didn't get paid to do the video. Um, we more so did it for ourselves, you know, to get exposure. It doesn't matter. I mean, I had fun. They didn't have to choose us, but they did. I always tell the entertainers, use this as a stepping stone to get where you're trying to go. I would love to do more things like this in the future. Maybe modeling or other videos, wherever it, it can take me. I wouldn't be surprised to see Jada and a 50 Cent video. I wouldn't be surprised to see Jada and a Kanye West video. I look at BT and TV a lot, and I kind of like fantasize. Maybe that could be me in real life or me on TV or, you know, something like that. But it's something you just dream about. Maybe it could come true. Maybe it can. Coming up, why hip-hop TNA probably isn't going away. Sex sells. And the industry that we are in is of selling sexiness. We hear that all the time. Well, sex sells. Crack sells. <laughs> that don't make it good. Next on Hip Hop Videos, Sexploitation on the Set. Stop. For the majority of hip-hop artists, racy videos are a three-minute fantasy and the ultimate symbol of success. That's the American dream, to have, you know, beautiful women, to have the nice cars and the jewelry. The hip-hop artist wants to see the cars, the jewelry, the girls, because those are all the things he dreamt of having when he was growing up broke in the projects. We see so many images and videos with the, the hot girls and the mansion and the bling and all that because it's a formula. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Sex sells. And the industry that we are in is of selling sexiness. She's sexy. We hear that all the time. Well, sex sells. Crack sells. <laughs> that don't make it good. Money is being made, but the videos may not be doing much for African-American women, other than perpetuating racial stereotypes. I don't think these images are positive for the African-American community. They don't represent us well. The community that I, I'm a part of is so much bigger and so much richer than that. This becomes the commercial for who we are as young American women of color. Double back. But plenty of hip-hop players see the race criticism as proof of a double standard. Nobody never said one of those, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, just degrading white women. Nobody ever said, Hugh Hefner, you're degrading white women. So nobody should be able to say the same thing about African-American women. You see a beautiful girl in the Sum 41 video, she's not a video girl. You see a beautiful girl in Justin Timberlake's video, she happens to be a model. But you see a black girl in an LL Cool J video, they want to label her as a video girl. We can't sit here and focus on the video people as an exploitation for girls. Let's shut down all the porno shops. Let's shut down every strip club in America. Let's clean up prostitution. If that's the case, we got a lot of things to do. Still, even some people in the industry are getting sick of all the booty and bling. I wish it would change. We can have hip-hop videos without having the girl half-naked or showing the big diamonds or, you know, the grill in your mouth. You know, I think hip-hop is more than that. It's the public's responsibility to, you know, force these artists to be more creative. But if that's what the public is buying, then so be it. I think for every video that's out now, 
the visuals fit the song. It just so happens that 98% of our music is lewd and disgusting. Until rappers say, okay, enough is enough, then that's the only way that we can move into a direction to where women aren't being looked at as hoes or just a sex symbol. That's why you have to applaud people like a Kanye West, a Common, a Talib Kweli, people that are really trying to, you know, transcend the art form musically as well as visually. Common's video, Go, managed to feature beautiful women without the butt shaking. It's a very sexual video, but it's nothing lewd or crass or anything like that, you know? It's just focusing on the beauty of the woman. I like girls. I love women. I'm not, like, trying to be anti-women in the video. It's all in the way we do it, the way you approach it. Music make you lose control. Hip-hop videos may offend some, but some point out that at least they're giving African-American women opportunities in the biz. Hip-hop is really opening the doors for young black People, I mean, of all colors, I mean, black, white, it doesn't matter. It's open the doors for everybody to make money. La, 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 la. But getting in is only half the battle. The hard part for most video girls is turning it into something more. A lot of young girls come up to me and they say, I want to be a video model just like you. And I'm like, well, what's after that? They have no clue. Yo. Melissa Ford, who began her career in videos with Cisco and Jadakiss, beat the odds by scoring her own show, BET Style. I'm extremely flattered by the fact that people come up to me saying, you really kicked a hole in the stereotype that video modeling is basically the end-all and be-all. Tawny Dahl went from videos with Nelly to acting in movies such as Beauty Shop. I went through a period where I was just like proving myself. No, I'm not just a video girl. No, that's this isn't just all I do. As for Corinne Steffens, her book's a bestseller. She's been speaking across the country about her video girl experience and raising her six-year-old son, Naeem. I am the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. For as long as I live, I will never be dependent on someone else again. Brooklyn. Maybe Corinne's story is a lesson for video girls. They may have more power than they think they do. Yeah. I mean, the reality of it is, is that if you get the right young lady in a video, she could probably bring a lot more to the table than the actual artist can. That's what makes them want to see the video in the first place. Yeah, the artist is great. I love your lyrics. But who is the chick in the thong, third from the left? If all the girls just stood up and walked out and said, we're not doing this crap, you wouldn't have a video. Holla back.